What's going on guys, VZ Duels here, and today I'm here to share with you guys what I've been finally cooking up for so long after being sick for about a couple weeks, not being able to really adequately test my, um, you know, project that I've been talking about. Ultimately, this is what's certainly been working for me lately, so as you guys can tell from the title of the video... We're going for Sinful Spoils or Snake Eye. I'm probably going to put Snake Eye. Um, Snake Eye Tri-King. And you're going to see the tri part that I'm talking about. So, unfortunately, yes, we are in the, the Tier 0 meta. So, unfortunately, it calls for pretty much kind of crutching on this engine right here. The 3 Ash. Let me adjust the camera again here real quick. Uh, get a little bit of a better top-down view of everything. Maybe adjust here. Okay. So, we do triple ash. We do the one oak. One poplar, because I never got a second one. But, um, honestly, this one single copy has worked just fine for me. Um, and for the sake of saving space for what I'm going to show you, um, honestly, it's fine to just run the one. Though I do want to have a second, I just wouldn't have the room for it. Uh, Flame Burge, because overpowered card is overpowered. And since I don't have that second Poplar, I opted for Birch. And honestly, these last two locals, this card has actually been coming up pretty nicely. Um, just for the fact that you get to special summon the snake eyes on your opponent's turn. I actually did have this come up to me, uh, against my round three opponent, Labyrinth. Um, where they went first, they had different dimension ground, and, um, I basically just went into this with a fire and then just passed turn, let them do their stuff, and then I just basically set up a wall and... This going into this, this adding this, this specialing that, and then going further. So this card is actually still pretty good. It's still very viable, and it's another nice little search target for Snake Eye Ash. Um, just in case you need further extension, because, you know, you sometimes need that extension in the game. So, Snake Eye Engine. One Diabell Star. Again, this is the only one I've pulled. This is the only one that uh, I ever really traded and whatever for, so I could trade for a second one, but honestly with this build, I don't think I'm going to really necessarily need it. There was only um, a case tournament that I tried this deck out in that made me really want to do Double Die Bell Star, but it's just because of dumb luck, honestly. Um, they managed to banish this off of uh, Cash Hero Rise Heart. And off of like top three, basically killing my wanted that was in my hand, so it just made me really salty. But, um, so in that retrospect, I would play a second copy if I had one. It's just again, I wouldn't really know the room to put it. Um, so moving on, of course, this is the Snake Eyes Fire King, Tri King. So then we have our one Ponyx, our one. Let me try to turn this light off, see how this looks. Uh, not enough light, unfortunately. Let me pull this back. Sorry that this lighting is a little weird today. I don't know what's going on. Maybe if I drop this down a bit. I don't know. It's just weird. I'll work on the lighting for the next video. I apologize for this time, guys. But, um... So we got our Ponyx, our Garunix, our uh, Fire King, our Vada... And then two Kirin. Um, for the longest, I've been doing three. And honestly, after watching the um, YCS Vegas, I think, yeah, the, the two Kirin is definitely the way to go. Being able to dodge in perms and stuff is pretty useful, but having these as bricks in hand sucks more than anything. So honestly, the two is perfectly fine. Um, all right, and then as for the Tri Engine... You have one, f two Fractal, one Kits, and one Nerval. Now here's the philosophy to these, is, so, for this build, you're 
already going to be committing your normal summons to better monsters, which in this case is the Snake Eyes. Um, or in worst case scenario, Ponyx. Um, so you're not really going to be able to normal summon stuff. Um, running Caress requires that you neg one, and you would have to run a much stronger Fire King engine. And unfortunately, the Fire Kings in this current format would not be strong enough to be really running on a heavy build for it. Just for the sake of just, I guess, being a little too linear. That and they're very dependent on Garunix. So, Fire King just kind of has to be like an auxiliary support to whatever you're playing it with. But, um, that being said, keeping the Tri Brigades as minimal as possible is kind of a thing too. I see this more as a further extension and a follow-up answer to whatever it is that your opponent has to throw at you. If you have this in in your um, opening hand, your Fractal's in opening hand, great. There is actually a couple uses for this. But um, ultimately what you're looking at is, um, in retrospect to the Fire King, so again, Snake Eye, Tri-King, this is basically in synergy with the Fire King portion. Um, so the idea is, if you have Fractal in hand, great. You use Fractal, pitch Nerval, Nerval, add kit. You just have an extra card. All right. Um, and then if you don't have Fractal, or you have like a kit in hand, you can go ahead and um, use the Fire Kings to rid of the kit. The kit will get rid of the Nerval. The Nerval will get the fractal um and then the idea is because in spoilers um we do play uh promethean princess in this because you know fire deck and all um the recursion comes out of these two anyway so pretty much you are guaranteed to bring back something in some way shape or form or what you're i'm gonna explain a little bit later is that Arvada is also a way to bring these back. And there is a very tricky way to um, actually make these live off of that. And I'll go over that a bit when I get into the extra deck portion. But that's it for monsters on uh, Tri Brigade side. Moving on with the rest of the engine stuff uh, into spells. We're looking at two wanteds i only pulled one i just i traded for one at a uh, regional never got my third copy until just today but today i performed pretty well even with just these two but ultimately i feel like the three wanted is kind of necessary um just to give you access to to the bell star and uh recursion and just giving that free draw one plus recurring your um, original sinful spoils, but before I get to that one, three bonfire because you know pyros. Um, now that I got the third copy of wanted, what I'm actually probably looking to do is eliminate a third bonfire for that wanted, just because as good as bonfire is at facilitating everything, um, it's kind of susceptible, especially if you run into a droll. So. If you have both of these in hand, you're basically going to be starting off Bonfire and then uh, going Wanted if they Droll you after adding, like, Poplar or something. But, um, no, I, I think Bonfire is a very susceptible card as opposed to what Wanted is. So that's where I get the idea of um, kind of cutting this down. Plus, this doesn't have late game use as much, so top decking this in late game, during a grind game, whatever, it's really going to suck seeing it because you're essentially going to be not being able to do anything with it. Wanted, however, you can. And Wanted can not only get you a 2500 body, but it can give you your original, which gives you basically what Bonfire does without searching. Um, it gives you a plus one draw, gives you like everything versus Bonfire. So in that right, I wouldn't mind cutting this down to two. I just, again, ultimately I don't think Bonfire is that, that great of a card. It's just only great because of Poplar. And, um, just again, that we're in the format that we are in. 
but it shouldn't be nearly as good as wanted. Um, one original sinful spoilers, I would like to run a second because this was another one that in my same matchup that this got banished off of a Cash Hero Rise Heart during that case tournament, and I was mad I didn't have a second one to play off of, and I really needed it during that. So, um, I wish I could play a second, but there's just no sensible, logical reason to, um, other than just getting mad at a lucky instance for the opponent. Um, King Sanctuary and King Islands. Um, that's the rest of the spells, just to, again, access your Fire King stuff. As much as I'd like to run Circle the Fire King, you need gas, and you don't want to have to rely on Graveyard for stuff, which is what Circle is. Um, so, I see that as a very difficult card to rely on, even as, like, a nice late-game Ponic Search, but um, ultimately... Uh, because you're playing the Tri Brigades, you're probably going to end up banishing the Ponics, actually. Um, the Revolt, just because Tri Brigade, and this is the powerhouse version of uh, what it is that Tri Brigade has to offer. So that's it for Engine. Um, so Interruptions, Counters, Stops for your opponent. I've opted to cut down to 2 Ash. And the reason being is that I feel like Ash is a very weak card in this format, and that there are much better cards out there. I was playing three in the tournament I went to yesterday, but then as of today, I cut it down to two, and um, it worked out very well for me, honestly. Um, what I replaced it with is much better, ultimately, in my opinion. Uh, we got the three nibs because special summoning is crazy this format. Um, there are a lot of decks I run into like Labyrinth where this doesn't come into use and then these just instantly get sided out. But it is still a good way to prevent getting OTK'd by something like Salomon Great, which um, was a matchup I had yesterday. This came up like two or all three games against them and ultimately was the reason I won. But, um, and then I even went against this against the Medulce player, and it's just insane. So, you do need this card, even for those decks that might not go into five summons, like Voiceless Voice and all. Um, you just want to prevent F FTK, or OTKs and stuff like that from happening to you. Uh, Double Droll. A lot of people play Triple. It seems so low impact now, this format, that it's just kind of like an extra thing that I wanted to put in. You'll kind of see what I mean by that. Um, so this is the card that I opted to replace my third copy of Ash with as Valor. Is being able to negate whole effects of monsters seems to be a lot more impactful as opposed to just Ash Blossoming one card. Like, wait for them to use their original Sinful Spoils, Special Summon something, and then just shut off everything completely, um, as opposed to just negating the search for Poplar, and then they just ha have further extensions, and you, they just don't care. <clears throat> it, it makes them have to play around your um, interruption, as opposed to, oh, you just stopped one thing, I'm gonna do the other, as is what um, Snake Eye Ash and Snake Eye Oak can do um so that's it for the monsters for that um then we have the two talents and two crossouts so this is the part as to why i still run at least a copy of droll and a copy of ash is so i have uh targets for crossout designator if i'm going first um this card is incredible uh, definitely in this format where tier 0 and you're playing the tier 0, you're bound to run into a similar deck. So not only are you able to call hand traps and stuff that might cripple your ability to play, but you can even call out your own cards in your own engine when it's your opponent's turn and they try to summon out Ash and use its effects. You just say no and shut them down completely. Um, in the case tournament, I actually use this to call... Um, the Kirin, and it pretty much kept me alive, and then I end up having both of these in hand. My ratios for that tournament were different, so I think I had like th uh, three dozen air in the main, or maybe uh, one, I don't know, but 
I definitely had a mixture of these, and these two together were how I just completely decimated my uh, mirror match. But yeah, both cards are great. Talents for the taking and drawing and looking at opponent's hand. It's just a very necessary card for a format where everybody's running them hand trips. And then the Imperms. Um, again, Crossout Designator is so much better. Um, just for the sake of people playing this as they're out against you. Which this card will not touch. This one will, however. Um, and then this prevents their talents from being alive as well. So, you do have to run it. Um... So that's it for main deck. So extra deck, and this is the part where I start explaining some things a little bit. Uh, one Link Karibo. Um, so this is kind of in like a little botched order. Uh, so nothing in particular. So the Link 1, Link Karibo. Um, Link 2s, we're going to have Salamagri, Sunlight Wolf, Kida, Doolittle, SPIP. Um, just a given for this... Uh, Doolittle Chimera works very nicely with the tri Brigades, just because of the fact that it's a beast, and then just the fact that it also gives you Recursion as well, um, and as a fire, for all this stuff to kind of culminate and work together. I haven't really made mega use of this, it's just kind of like a filler card, but it's something good for late games, or grinding, or recurring, whatever the case calls for. These two cards, of course, are overpowered, but my variant doesn't really ever see itself go into Flamberge, put IP in the spell trap zone. I oftentimes end with other weirder boards, um, partly due to the tri brigades, but um, either way, it is still an option, and I do leave that option available to myself at a lot of times. Um, so that's it for twos. Then we have our Promethean Princess, because overpowered card is overpowered. Amblo Whale, because this is the best card to go into following up uh, Princess, and the best setup for Princess at that. Um, usually I'll go into like a Hita if my opponent uses Ash, or I'll go into Salma Great's uh, Sunlight Wolf and recur back a uh, Kirin or something after Link Summoning using uh, Flamberge. Um, so having another target for the Amblo Whale uh, when it gets popped off of this it's pretty nice, pretty useful. Uh, one Appaloosa, because, I mean, it is Appaloosa, a good link for to really um, get, keep your opponent from being able to do much. Um, it is a great way to end off your fire uh, Tri-Brigade lines. Uh, then we play our Z Lantis, and this is the card that I mean when I say about using Arvada to bring out a Tri-Brigade is if you can get out of tri Brigade that way, while Promethean Princess is on board with another fire, you go into Amblo Whale, you go into Zelantis, you use Zelantis to re-summon everything, and because you do that, the, um, the effect negation and the end of turn destruction that Arvada gives actually gets removed off of that monster because it got re-summoned. So now the monster that you have special summon off of that Arvada is live and you can use its effect. So you send Fractal from hand to send uh, Nerval, add a kit. Okay, you use um, the Fire King line, you get Arvada to bring out the Fractal. Okay, then you go into this after all your stuff and then you resummon it, and then there you go. It's perfectly live. And then you'll have, at that point, enough materials in grave, usually you're going to banish a Nerval and a um, Ponyx to get that effect off. Um, and then worst case, you have backup, you have your Garunix, and you have your uh, uh, Arvada, and your Revolt lets you bring those two back if need be. Um, if, you know, you, you had to banish them for, like, the normal summon kit that follows, um, then you do it. Or, uh, if you are cracked and you have a lot more extenders to where you can take a failed, uh, Farajit effect and go into, or not Farajit, Fractal, and to go into a Farajit, use the Farajit special summon that kit, banish Fractal, banish, um, whatever else, and then you'll get yourself your, uh, Bear Room, 
And then right there you have your Appaloosa with the Zelantis pointing to it, of course. And um, so then you'll have your double to triple negate. You're more than likely going to leave the kit set that way. Promethean Princess has something to special summon itself off of. And then in turn, uh, making Garunix live and Kirin live and Arvada live, which is the absolute powerhouse that is what this deck and engine has to offer. Um, as for the alternative options, is um, so the given is the Omen. Um, I don't step at one, I do two. And that's just because I've run dark for ever since I built this deck, and I've never seen a good opportunity to actually utilize it. I mean, you could take somebody's SP, but I feel like that is so much more minimal versus the other things that this deck can do. So ultimately, I kind of opt out of that um, engine, uh, or um, that card, Dark. But um, And then another option, just in case I don't really have a lot of resources or I'm in the late game, Double Dragon Lord is a great way to gatekeep in my match today against Cash Tira. My only loss, though, um, this was how I won my second game because I just basically gatekeep my opponent to where they can't do anything or whatever the case may be. Um, or actually, I think I lost that round two, but um, it was basically the option that mattered because... Again, just being able to gatekeep your opponent's summoning and whatever else that they have for you just makes this card nice and strong, easily accessible because it's only Link 2, and a great option. And especially when you're resetting your um, Poplars and stuff in Spell and Trap Zone, you could always use Double Dragon Lords to just send stuff like that to the graveyard. Put Flamberge in the... Um, Spell trap zone, uh, use double dragon lord, send that. Now you got two bodies for free. Um, so there's a lot of synergies to go behind that, too. Um, so moving on into the side deck, we do two bell, two DD crow, our third ash, our third droll. So for the decks that do search out a lot, because people do still play things like sprite or some decks might be like Runic, or whatever the case may be, and maybe you even just want to play this in the mirror just to try to stop your opponent. God forbid that they have only Bonfire. Literally do this after Bonfire, and you're pretty much good to go, so long as they don't have further extensions. Um, especially if they add Ash. Um, usually at that point, they're just cooked. So this card is still good. Um, Ash, third one. I side this in against decks where it is much more impactful. So if I face up against Branded, or if I faced up against, like, Yesterday and Today, Labyrinth, where they have the big welcomes and all that, um, this is a good card to definitely run three of. And um, it, it's just, there is that option. Um, I split these up, DD Crow and Ghost Bell. Just for the sake of that D Crow is such a strong way to counter cards like uh, Princess. More so than I would say that Bell is, just because then you remove it completely, as opposed to just stopping it for the turn. Um, but still having the Bell as an option is still good to have. Just because, again, just in case the DD Crow doesn't work... Or if you face up against Labyrinth and they play Big Welcome and you want to stop that. In which case, it helped me yesterday and today doing that. Um, so yeah, I like to do a split like this. Because sometimes DD Crow can be the better card. Sometimes Ghost Bell could be the better card. Sometimes they're both useful. Face up against Branded or something, both of them can be useful. And then instead of having just three copies of Bell, you have two copies of Bell, two copies of D.D. Crow, so you just cited in four different ways to stop your opponent on top of everything else. So that's it for monsters in the side. Spells, we got the three Cosmic Cyclone, because stopping spells and traps is just very strong in this format. Um, after playing the last two days, uh, a thing I've been considering is Ghost Ogre. Just because I see a lot of continuous spell activations and a lot of, like, on-field effect activations and stuff that I feel like Ghost Bell would be very adequate in handling. Um, 
but Cosmic Cyclone basically takes care of that. It's just the Ghost Ogre would mean that you can go in as uh, going second. Uh, your opponent does their stuff, save face up against Voiceless Voice. They get their continuous spell and they have to use it search to do stuff or they have to use their um, uh, Herald to uh, get that, that what other, um, that tributes it. You get to pop all that stuff off and just rid of it completely. And because it's non-targeting, I feel like Ghost Ogre is a pretty optimal choice to potentially have. But for now, Cosmic Cyclone does the trick just as well. Um, very good to stopping, like, a spontaneous um, Flamber special or um, just in just in pretty much any niche application that you just want to remove a spell trap. Uh, get rid of Fire King Island, you know. Um, the third copy of Crossout Designator because going second kind of sucks and um, getting drolled kind of sucks. Or if you're going against a mirror, just having something that dead stops your opponent is amazing. So um, the third designator is why I have that in there. Um, I'm probably not going to take that out. I was thinking about doing it for making space for other cards, but ultimately I think this crossout designator is just better in that sense. So I'm probably leaving that in, just like I'm leaving the cyclones and everything else. This is probably the one I'm more keen on getting rid of, is Enemy Controller. I'm just thinking of using something like this going first or second. Um, that way I could break through my opponent's boards a little bit easier, taking something that they control and using it as my own. Or um, playing defensively with it and getting rid of something and just taking an important piece away from my opponent before they can extend further. Um, so, like, the, the moment they summon Promethean Princess, just take it, and then their plays essentially stop right then and there. Um, I'm probably gonna take these out for something else. I don't know what's probably the Ghost Ogres I'm gonna experiment, but for now, this is the reason why I run those. Um, that and then facing up against Cash Tira at that case tournament kind of irritated me in that had I had a card like Enemy Controller that could take my opponent's Fenrir and I can use it for myself, it would have helped me to get rid of uh, Summon Limit and to kind of get more control over my opponent to that extent. So that's the reason why I run that. And then the last card on the side is what everybody's starting to pick up on play is one of the floodgates that should have been hit too that everybody's like, yeah, that Konami messed up on this one. This card just controls your opponent way too hard. I did this against my Rescue Ace matchup, uh, Snake Eye Rescue Ace matchup yesterday, and it just stops them dead in their tracks. Like, they can't do anything. I even set up a pretty suboptimal board, and they just go normal summon, ash, sp uh, add poplar, special poplar. They go, go right into the original, you chain this, and they just stop. They can't do anything. Summon Limit just stops your opponent dead in their tracks, puts the limit on them. You already have all the big beefy monsters. You didn't even need to use a monster effect in that turn to allow them to get a talent or thrust off. So this card is just way too good right now. I did use to play uh, Anti-Spell thinking that it was an impactful card, but ultimately this card definitely seems to be the better one. I was just keeping that in mind for power spells like Talents and Thrust is that it would stop that, and then ultimately it would stop original in the field spell and all those cards, but um, this is just a lot more hurtful and a lot more oppressive, and being on the receiving end of this is what was basically the thing that convinced me of that. So this card is undeniably just super, super strong right now. It isn't good against all matchups. Voiceless Voice was a bad one for me to try siding this out in, but... Um, in matchups like Fire King and anything that uses small monsters to build up to big monsters um, is so susceptible to this card that it's insane. Uh, but anyways, that's my uh, Snake Eye Tri King profile. If you guys have any feedback, questions, leave them in the comments and I'll go ahead and answer them when I uh, get around to it. 
But uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to keep tweaking this deck, but I do enjoy it as of today. I did get third place. My matchups were Cash Tira, which was my only loss. Um, it was a buy uh, Salomon Great that just gave up after losing round one. Um, and then it was Labyrinth, which was a 2-0. Uh, the Cash Tira was a 2-1, um, so I did get a win out of it, but ultimately it was time game that went against me for that. Um, but uh, And then my fourth matchup was Chimera, and it, it just was... Ash the Swordsman, and um, game uh, game one was just set up everything against them. They can't do anything. But uh, that being said, this is VZ Duelist. Again, if you guys have any questions, feedback, let me know. Um, comment section is always open for you guys to use and uh, have some discussion. VZ Duelist, signing off. Thanks for watching, guys.